the Swiss CDC multi-clamp, how to use it, the English version. Fly fish food. So we got these cool Swiss CDC multi-clamps in um, and you know I, I've used a lot of the other clamps, the Stompho, the Petitjean, and there's something about this one that just makes it super super easy to use and uh, very versatile. So I'm going to show you some of the things that I've been doing with it and uh, we'll go from there. So first things first, um, obviously CDC. Now with a lot of the other clamp materials the easiest way to do that is just to come in here grab, I have a piece of red and a piece of brown CDC together so you can kind of see the two separate pieces. You could come in here and just trim them off like this. That's that's a very easy way to to use CDC. Then on the next fly, you pull it over and do the other other side of it. Um, the Petitjean clamp, which is no longer available through a lot of the U.S. distributors, um, at least that move a lot of product, had had a little clip table where you could you could put the stems of the CDC down into and clip the the fibers into it. Now there's a little hack with one of these magic erasers. So what I've done is I've taken just a magic eraser available at most grocery stores and I drew lines in it so I knew where the, the cuts would be. And then I just took a little double-sided razor and I cut notches into the, the foam. And the reason why I cut it at an angle is because not all CDC is very long. You can see these two pieces of CDC are different lengths. And just for ease of, of doing this, I'm going to use the longer piece. And I'm going to find my slot that's roughly the same length as this piece of CDC. And I'm just going to put it down into that table, just like that. So from here, if I wanted to take that piece of CDC, I'm going to cut the ends off and come in here with my, my clamp and grab it and just pull it out. So now we have that piece of CDC ready to go and I can put that in the clamp. Now let me show you on the vise now the, the, the significance of this pointed section of the clamp. So when I put the clip into this loop, I'm going to just put my finger here and move it out very slowly. And by having my finger here, it will make it so I don't pull this clamp out too far. And so I can just open the clamp now and I've got my CDC totally clamped up and I'm going to put my finger right here to make sure that the CDC stays in the loop. Um, if I just let this hang, there's a risk of the CDC falling out because it would just be hanging vertically and this could get a little bit looser. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep it um, on my finger and then just start twisting my tool. It's a lot easier to twist up if I'm not filming and then it will twist up my CDC and we're good to go. Okay, so with this you can either pull the fibers back or you can just use the rotary now to wrap your CDC. Pull it back maybe every loop, wrap it traditional style, however you want. So you get the picture here. Um, once you tie in the, the CDC to the fly. If that's too long for the fly that you want to tie, you can just grab the fibers and pinch them and just break them off. So then it shortens the fibers. But anyway, that's how to do a CDC collar with the, the, the VersaClamp. Okay, another technique with CDC is um, I could Put it in the, the piece of foam. I've got two pieces this time. And if I want to just create a clump of CDC for a wing on a fly or a post, I'll just grab this just like that and, and trim it off just like the last time. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly open this clip and then just gather all the materials down at the base and now I've got a nice little clump of CDC. You tie that in. 
uh, for any type of fly that would use a, a clump of CDC. All right, so that's the obvious use for this clip with, with just CDC, but there are lots of other uses for, for the clip. Um, one of the coolest ones, I think, is with deer hair. So I'm going to take some just X caddis deer hair from Nature's Spirit. You could use that or compare it on hair or something similar to that, but you can see it's a very fine deer hair. The cool thing about these little points is I can just open up that, that point and slide it in to the deer hair however I want it and trim off that deer hair and now I can have deer hair in a loop. Um, and it's really easy because of that point that's there. Now if I wanted to and I wanted a say a shorter deer hair hackle type thing I would grab this hair and I would move it further up the hair so that I just have a little bit poking out. In fact that's what I'll do and when you take that you can just fold the deer hair over so that you have a nice little section to trim off the hair. So pretty cut and dry. The other thing is let's say that I wanted that's a little bit too short but I've already got the deer hair cut off I can just lightly open this up and push the deer hair in a little bit with my finger. Um, it's not going to disrupt anything so I can, I can make adjustments on the fly. Okay, so once I have the deer hair where I want it, I don't want all the, the butts of the hair in the way of the fly. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit shorter. And as you can see, you can, you can adjust a little bit. So it's going to be about like this. And I'm going to wrap down the, the body on this. So you can do just a little tiny bit of deer hair if you want. Uh, for a little hackle or, or something like this, this would create basically a whole fly worth of deer hair. So I'm going to make a dubbing loop, again, that's just a little bit longer than the clip. I'm going to close it off on the back. And then, as you can see, it puts a little bit of twist in my thread, so I'm going to untwist it until it's straight. Then I'll grab my tool, and I'm just using 6 aught uni thread. I'm just going to take my tool and put it all the way in the thread and use the same finger technique. And now I've got that deer hair in the loop with not a lot of butt sections of the hair poking over uh, or creating too much bulk, so just a little bit at the other end. Now from here, again, I'm just going to start twisting it up. And you'll see that it, it really starts to twist up nice and even. And I just like to twist it up until I can no longer see the, the segmentation of my thread. That, that tells you that you're very, very twisted up in there. And then you can even just give it a little bit of a tug to, to tighten up the twists. And you're ready to wrap. All right, so once I have this, I, could, I can just take my thread or my loop and I'm just going to wrap this rotary style and it will look like it's matting all up but it's it's not going to do anything to the body it's actually laying down nice and evenly and then once you get up to the front you pull some of those fibers back and trim off your excess loop and you can even take a hair stacker in here and stack the hair back a little bit if you want. But essentially, you've got a, a really nice, evenly dispersed hair fly. I mean, I did this pretty long. You can do it much shorter. So you can do stimulator hackles. You can do elk hair caddis this way. In fact, if you just did the whole fly like this and then just trim the bottom, you'd have a pretty killer little caddis fly. Anyway, that's how to use deer hair with the multi-clamp. Okay, the next thing that you can do with this is put um, hen hackle in it to make a smaller soft hackle pattern. So here I've got a really cool color of a 4B hen saddle, but the fibers are much too long if I wanted to tie anything, say, it's smaller than an 8. So we can, we can make a little loop of, of hackle feathers out of this one. So I've just prepared a little bit of the feather and I'm just going to pull some of those to the side and pinch them in place. 
On this part, I'm going to clamp these down close to the point of, of the, the clamp. That way, when I put it in the loop, it's going to be close to the top. So from here, I'll just come in with my scissors. And these scissors are cool, now available on the site. Now I've got a little clump of hackle that I can tie on a fly that's uh, much smaller than the original size 8. So again, we'll make a, a dubbing loop and close it off. And now when I put this in here, I'm going to move the tool as close to the hook as possible. Put the whole clamp in there and then just pop it off of there and let it go. That's that can be the hardest part of using this clamp is not pulling the fibers all the way out of the loop. So again, hold it with my finger while I give it a twist. And the longer your loop is, the longer it takes to get the twist to reach the actual hackle. So these don't twist quite as nice and even as the hair um, because they, they kind of stick together so you comb them out a little bit. And anyway, that's our soft tackle loop. All right, so these are a little bit different. What I like to do is um, just preen the fibers back to one side so they're all hanging out on the same side of the loop. And this is great for uh, like a guide's choice hair's ear or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to preen those back with every wrap. And there you have it, a nice little soft tackle. And the actual the little butt ends of this actually make a cool little effect. Um, so obviously the the smaller your butt ends on the loop are, the the cleaner it's going to be. But I mean, if you look at that little soft tackle, and you told me that wasn't partridge, I probably wouldn't believe you. All right. Last but not least, I've got a little tiny piece of squirrel. Um, it's easier to use the whole piece of squirrel versus a little zonker strip because the strip is kind of squirrely. It'll want to move around on you. But this is probably my favorite way to make a soft tackle anymore. It's just had a little piece of squirrel. I use uh, the full piece of, of squirrel just because it's easier to kind of keep in one place as opposed to a little zonker strip of squirrel. So what I'm going to do is just take the, the tip of this clip and just grab a little bit of the squirrel. Now if I if I wanted to and get a really thick clump of squirrel I could surely do that but it'd be way overkill for for a small fly. So I like this for like you know 14s and 16s even 18. So I'm going to come in here and just grab a little small section of squirrel and clamp that down and then pull the clip up slightly so that I just have some of the guard hairs coming out the, the top of it. Then I'll flip that over and come in here with my scissors and just trim that off the pelt. And now I've got a little section of squirrel that I can use for soft tackles. Now if I wanted that even shorter, I could just grab the squirrel and pull it um, or push it or, or line that up however I want. And after I, I mess with it with my fingers, I'm actually going to come in here and, and trim it all flush again. So that's a little squirrel section. So here I've got my, my loop that's opened up. And with this one, again, I've got it really close to the tip. I'm going to use that same finger technique and just kind of pop it in place and let it loose. Okay, so once I have this, again, I'm going to put my finger on the thread and just start twisting it. And the squirrel's really cool. It's going to twist up really nice and tight. And you can see those, those little guard hairs look almost like hackle fibers. All right, for the squirrel, I actually like to moisten my fingers. And I'm going to take those fibers and pull them all on the same side of the loop. So we've got it just like that. And I'm not going to wrap that rotary style. I'm just going to get that started and then preen those fibers back with every turn.
All right. So once you've got your loop put where you want it, you can make a little few wraps of thread in front of it. Obviously, that's that's kind of moistened down, but as we dry it out, it, you can see that it, it makes a really nice uniform collar around your fly. Um, this is probably my favorite use for the multi-clamp. Okay, so as you can see, this, this is a very versatile tool. You can use it with pelts of fur, deer hair, hackle, CDC, and even little dubbing fibers in it. But um, highly recommend this tool. It's, it's, a, it's a very easy to use tool and something I'll probably have on my desk all the time.